What's up everyone? It's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another review today and we're going to be talking about Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers, the sixth film in the franchise. Ugh, this marks an end of an era because this is the end of the original uh, timeline that's usually called the sequel timeline. Probably the craziest of all the films on this list of these original six. <laughs> so we're going to get into it. Of course we're going to be talking spoilers so if you haven't seen it you have to go run out and watch it and then come back and talk about it with me. So let's get into this. So Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers is definitely the one I think is the craziest out of these original six. It has to do with answering a lot of the questions that Five brought up and didn't answer. So that's part of the reason why this one's kind of really crazy. But is this a bad slasher movie? I'm going to say no, in my opinion. This still is a very solid slasher film. I'm going to get into the reasons why I like this movie. So the key reasons why I like this movie is I think Michael Myers is actually the darkest, most brutal in this movie until we get to the Rob Zombie Halloween film. But I think this one is his most brutal movie. Like he gets a lot of kills in this movie, some crazy kills too. And I think the ambiance and the vibe is really there when you feel this one and you watch it. And it does really feel like the Halloween time of year. So that's why I always gravitated towards the curse. Like I said, it's not one of my favorite favorites. But I gravitated towards it, especially around the Halloween season, because it has that real good ambiance about it. Also, I think it's a really good idea to bring Donald Pleasance back. We have to give it up to Donald Pleasance, the man that played Samuel Loomis for so long. He committed to this franchise, and regardless of how crazy and how wild this franchise got, he was down to stick down and be Samuel Loomis. So we really have to give a hand and some love to Donald Pleasance for sure. And also some other actors in this film I thought were really good. Paul Rudd, even though it's a really young acting role for him, I think this is his second actual studio movie that he did. And he plays Tommy Doyle, the kid that was babysitted by Laurie Strode in the first film. And I think he actually does a pretty good job. There are some scenes where he really sells it with his reactions and stuff. And he does a little acting over the top when he's doing a lot of his heavy dialogue stuff. But to have an actor come in on only your second movie, and Paul Rudd has some of the biggest dialogue in this movie, I think he delivers pretty well. And I also like just the cinematography in this film too, the look of it, the music, all that stuff, the soundtrack. Like I said, this one has a really good feel to it and a good pace to it as it keeps going. Like it kicks off right away, throws you into the film, and you're kind of just on for the ride. I think this one is the, the fastest pace out of all the Halloween films. It kind of keeps going and it just keeps going and you have to be on the ride for this film. So let's get into talking about some of the negatives of this movie, and there are some negatives, and like I said, that has to deal with mostly having to answer questions that Five brought up that they didn't answer, like the thorn tattoo on Michael Myers, or our mystery figure with the black hat at the end of Halloween 5. So Curse answers all those questions that is, is explains that Michael Myers was marked with a thorn tattoo, which is like an ancient symbol that was used for uh, like civilizations way back in the day where the villagers would mark a family family with the thorn symbol and like real big tragedy would befall that family and it would protect everyone else so it was like a sacrifice to the gods and it always happened around like that October season because that's when the constellations line up and all this stuff so like and there's this cult that you know is behind Michael Myers evil so like I said this one is the most wild and probably far-fetched out of all the Halloween films that we've gotten so far and you kind of just have to really be on the ride for this one even as we get into that third act like the third act it is amazing and it's entertaining like this one that's another word I was thinking this film is entertaining but that third act it does get a little bonkers and you have to be on for the ride especially when we get our ending scene and this film is really known for having a tortured pre-production there's a lot of stuff going on in this film a lot of people's ideas a director who t just didn't really have the vision for Halloween and then we have like I said a lot of producers coming into metal with this film we actually have a producer's cut of this movie and this is like one one of the only movies I could think of that actually has a producer's cut you know usually it's a director's cut or an unrated cut but yeah this one has a producer's cut and like the stories change like all kinds of stuff and another bad for me is we get Jamie Lloyd in this film but she is off in the beginning of this movie for me that one actually bothered me besides the Rachel one because we see Jamie get off it's not the same actress, and yeah, her, her kill is pretty brutal, but it just hurt my heart because Jamie Lloyd is probably my second favorite character in the Halloween franchise. So as I said, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers is a, definitely a wild one. We also get introduced to some new Strodes that we never really 
heard of before they kind of just come out of the woodworks but they moved into that house that Lori and them lived in and you know like I said it's the new strodes and all this stuff and we have a new young kid in this movie too who's kind of going through the stuff that michael did when he was younger so they're kind of showing you it's kind of like showing you what happened to michael that he's hearing voices and stuff like that that are telling him to do bad things so that's another reason again why people didn't like this thorn trilogy like hardcore halloween fans or other halloween fans because there's a lot of different timelines in this franchise and you could kind of pick which ones are your favorite and a lot of people don't like this one because, like I said, they go a really far away in explaining Michael Myers and try to giving him this backstory. But I really do like these ones. These ones, I have a like a warm feeling, like warm spot in my heart for these ones. This sequel timeline is still my favorite timeline. It's the one that I return to the most and that I binge the most with my friends when I was, you know, growing up in middle school and high school. Like these were the Halloween films that I returned to the most, like one, two, four, five, and six. So in my book, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers is going to get a 6.5 out of 10. I still think this is a pretty solid slasher, above average slasher. You know, it's on the cusp of being like a seven or an eight, a really good one. But like I said, it does have some really far-fetched things going on in it. You know, the third act gets kind of wild, and it has to do with a lot of just like explaining some crazy things that were started in Halloween 5. But to me, some of that is part of the beauty of 4, 5, and 6 is that, you know, it's kind of like the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I, I was thinking about that to explain it to a non-horror fan. It's similar to the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Three different films with different creative visions, and they just don't really feel cohesive or anything. But for me, I have a soft spot for horror films, and, like, I just have rose-tinted glasses probably when I watch these movies sometimes. But like I said... You know, it's my list, and everybody has their own list and their own feelings of which ones are their favorite timeline and stuff like that. So thanks for sticking around with me all for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section what you thought of Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Do you Are you fond of this film? Do you think it's crazy wild, or are you just kind of middle, mediocre, you know? Don't forget to drop a like either and subscribe to the channel because we're going to have some more horror and Halloween content coming. You want to keep that notification bell. Blink! Poke that so you don't miss a thing. And have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.